I'm still uh, I'm still at a loss with uh, how anticlimactic that whole confrontation was, and I feel like the author had written herself into a corner, so she just kind of had to pull something out of her ass. But we're back. We got two chapters. Let's just dive right in. <clears throat> Michelle was still home, rummaging through the closets when he walked in. He heard muffled grunts and the sound of stuff being shoved, inside, shoved aside. Hey, come here and help, would you? Michelle was struggling with a too big box crammed into a too high shelf. Did everything go okay at Ricky's place? Yeah, fine, he said. Don't you have somewhere to go? Mike didn't. Mike didn't like his mood just now. He certainly didn't want to be here sharing it with her. Here, take this box. And no, I don't. Where do you want me to put it? On the dining room table. I need to sort through it. He hoisted the box through the living room and onto the dining room table. What's in it? Michelle faced him and put her hands on her hips. It's Grandma's old china. I want to make an arrangement of her plates on the kitchen wall. She narrowed her eyes and walked over to him. You look happy. Uh, okay. He set the box down and waved her away. What else do you need me to do? Well, she led him back to the hall closet and handed him another box. You can start by cheering up. This goes into the kitchen. Mike followed Michelle into the kitchen and set the box down. He could feel his face burning. Whether from hurt or anger, he didn't know or care. He wasn't used to it. In fact, it was something completely new. And it was just something... Com it was something completely related to his fight with Ricky. If that was what just happened between him. Except, Ricky wasn't his girl. So how could what just happened be a fight? And if Ricky is my girl, he thought, the last thing we should do is be fighting. The last thing we should be doing is fighting. He either wanted to hide under his bed or grab a bottle of something and just settle in for the night. No glass, just bottle and Mike, the two of them. A rate eases sorrows. Except Michelle directly sorted except Michelle directed him to the silverware dot drawer. I really need to like take a nap. I'm like Like I could make the joke that the book has just turned my brain into mush. But that that's been tired out. No pun intended. I'm just I'm just tired and I want to get this done with. Empty that out, she pointed at the drawer, then vacuum out the crud and wipe it with a damp cloth. Then cut a piece of this. She grabbed a roll of shelf paper to fit the bottom of the drawer. She walked out of the kitchen, probably to resume the closet work. He bumbled around the drawer, fishing out the pieces of flatware then realized he could just lift out the entire tray of utensil. It was women's work. Not that he minded helping his sister, but this task required small hands and a nimble touch, not carefully from the drawer. Er, not... Sorry. Not the stubby logs his fingers felt like. I'm, like, really tired, guys. Maybe I should take a nap. I don't know. <sighs> Screw it. Just keep going. He tried lifting out the tray carefully from the drawer, but pulled out everything instead. The drawer dropped, the tray dropped too, and knives and forks scattered everywhere. The crash brought Michelle into the kitchen. What's wrong with you? Mike's nerves were shot. He wanted to be any place but in the same room with his sister. Doing tedious chores was making him crazy. Nothing. I'm a klutz, okay? It's that girl. Why don't you just leave for a while? You trying to get rid of me? Maybe I want to be alone. Maybe I don't feel like doing this shit. He stood there, scraping at the kitchen wallpaper with his fingernail, too pissed to move. Michelle moved in, began to clean up the silverware, the tray, the drawer. She put the silverware in the dishwasher, replaced the drawer, and put a tray in the sink, the tray in the sink. The whole time he just watched her do it. It took her all of three minutes. He felt like a jerk, but did not try to stop her or even help. She slammed the drawer shut with her hip. 
So, don't do this shit. Oh man, we're getting edgy with our language. Watch out, she means business. She grabbed the roll of shelf paper and cut a sheet to fit the drawer. I'm sorry. Did you just now drop off Ricky? Yeah. He stared out the window. The ash tree outside had fully leafed out. The color was fresh and new. The leaves a little translucent, brightly tinged in a yellow that would deepen into summer's rich green. You gonna see her again? He shook his head. Mm -mm. Why not? Look who she is. I don't want a girl like that. She colors her hair weird, runs around with man-hating females. She lies. She made up that whole post about me. It ruined my business. Michelle tipped her head at him. Her face looked at the certain way she did when she was seeing something besides the topic of conversation at hand and was going to call him out on it. He hated whenever she did it. You're wrong. Your business will survive. And that girl's a keeper. You're crazy. She's a freak. And I don't do freaks. When was the last time she looked that way? He thought. He had seen her twice now since the night of the rally. Today and at her parents' house today, yesterday. Ah, I'm having trouble turning the page. Okay, here we go. Oh, I've lost my spot. Neither of those times she wore the black glove. And her hair was pretty shade of blonde he liked so much. He wished she would grow it longer, except, no, he didn't wish. He didn't wish anything. How could he wish when she'd given him every chance today to... Are you serious? Yeah, nice engine. Sure. Okay, he didn't wish anything. How could he wish when she had given him every chance today to make her his girl, practically begged him, and he was such a jerk, he almost kicked her out of his truck. Was it fear? He didn't know. He never put himself in this position with any girl before. The first night I met her. Right. She's changed since then. I've seen it. You've seen it. You just haven't paid attention. She's in love with you. That's crazy. You think so? You never bring girls here. But you brought her here after the rally so she could clean up. I saw it then. I saw the way you looked at her, and she liked it. You brought her here so she would get my approval. Admit it. Well, you've got it. He glared at her and plunged his hands into his pockets. I don't need your approval. Say whatever you want. Did you even read her new blog post? No. Oh, well, let me enlighten you. Michelle took his elbow and led him to the living room. She steered him into the armchair across the couch. Sit. She grabbed some sheets of paper from the desk and stood in front of the fireplace as though she was addressing an auditorium. It was probably the printout of the post. He knew damn well why he hadn't read it. Just the name Petra's Parlance pissed him off all over again. Hurt, too, and he didn't want to feel that way anymore. It was all just words, except... Her tears today on the phone when she asked him for help getting into the house weren't just words. But tears didn't count. They, like words, were just another weapon wielded by females to manipulate guys like him. She hadn't colored her hair. That wasn't words either. What? She hadn't colored her hair. That wasn't words either. Maybe because you... Whatever. Just, I, I'm, I'm done questioning things. <laughs> and posting a blog, even though it was words, was a big risk she took. And now, Michelle was about to enlighten him. Whether he wanted enlightenment or not, he tensed up, trying to brace himself for all the emotional blows to come. It was a lie from the start, read Michelle. All of it. I knew exactly what I was doing. I did it anyway, as an act of an act of complete cowardice. I betrayed a great movement, a great president, some very nice people, but most of all, a wonderful man. For readers of my previous post, I must renounce that. 
Well, at least they're sort of bringing Trump back into the swing of things. I did say earlier that uh, it's MAGA romance, and they didn't talk about Trump, so hey, we, we threw it in. And so, this blog is a big mea culpa to all the great people at last week's rally, and to one man in particular. I hope he can find forgiveness in his heart, because I damaged him most of all. Michelle lowered the page and looked straight at him. Don't look at me that way, he said. His heart, his soul, were screaming in pain right now. Ricky had caused some immense suffering, and that suffering seemed to be playing through his whole being. Should I stop reading? Yes, I can't take it. Too bad. I'm not done yet but I'll skip down the page and read the pertinent part. At one time in my life, I thought that destroying marriage would be a great step for society to take. No one's preaching that! No. Maybe some people, like, this is not like the majority. And now the very thing I wanted to destroy in the space of 48 hours is something I very much want now for myself, my future. Mike was still hurting, but he no longer hurt for himself. He hurt for Ricky. There would be her shock at seeing the truth of what she had done and the pain of rejection of her friends over her telling that new truth. She'd come through a lot in a very short time. Her lies had hurt him. The fallout had disrupted his business, but the protests had subsided. In fact, her courageous acts had drawn off the attack dogs, and they instead had focused on her. She had, no she had to have known what would have happened, yet she'd be willing to live with the consequences. She'd done the right thing. He owed her his thanks, an apology. He owed her a truth of his own. I am ready to accept the role of an adult acting in the real world. I can't see how I've always, I can't see how I've ever had such a negative view of the world. And now, and I now pity and loathe people who do. It's wrong and they should stop. And I have to credit my newfound beliefs on a certain gentleman with old fashioned values, like our grandparents once had. There was a virtue in those values and I want them for myself. Michelle stopped. There's more. Mike put up his hand. I've heard enough. He couldn't stand the feelings ripping through him right now. The words must be true. She'd had to have thought them, typed them, pushed the publish button with, with knowing the blowback to come. And she'd done it anyway. It took courage to do that. Courage and guts. She's talking to you, Mike. She's in love with you. He doubted it. It was too risky for him to believe it was true. She could be lying. She's done it before. Why should I believe it? Because I saw it happen. Michelle pointed to the desk chair. Right there. Today. We read the blog together. I asked her to show it to me. So she read it out loud. She changed while I was reading it. Her face. Her voice. Everything. He narrowed his eyes. What do you mean? When she read that part to me I had just finished, she changed. I don't know, her voice got low. Her face kind of screwed up. Her bottom lip stuck out. I thought she might cry. She was very emotional. That was when I, that was when she fell in love with you. I know women, don't doubt me. Mike didn't know what to say. He couldn't speak anyway. There was a lump in his throat the size of an egg. His shell of anger was dissolving away. In its place was a sense of urgency, a need to right his own wrong, and fast, while he still had time. And what's more, Michelle paused for so long he looked up to see if she was going to continue speaking. He knew it was coming. Don't say it, he said. I'm saying it, Michelle said, and you're in love with her too. He hated the fact that she was right and she said it out loud. 
He wondered if he'd be able to tell Ricky when he saw her again, if he'd even get the chance. When he looked back at Michelle, she was staring at him. Her brows were raised in question. You should probably go talk to her. He rose, picked up his keys. I guess so. He sat down again. I'd better think this over a little bit. I need to work up my courage. Oh, I almost forgot, said Michelle. Now what? She's getting a tattoo this afternoon. He came out of his tear. He couldn't, chair, he couldn't let her do that. What? I don't like tattoos on women. Did she say what? <laughs> It's like they're comparing like the tattoo to like leaving town forever. It's like, what? She's getting a tattoo? I must stop her before she does. God, this is bad. He couldn't let her do that. What? I don't like tattoos on women. Did she say when? Michelle shrugged. I didn't ask. She didn't say. Well, did she tell you where? Yeah, that place called Covington. That dump? I've got to talk her out of it. Did you tell her how I feel about them? No, why would I? I don't care if she gets five tattoos. In fact, it made me think of getting one myself. They're permanent. God no really knows what it'll look like. But wait. He sat down, then looked up at Michelle. I can't tell her not to do it. I don't even have the right to ask her not to. Michelle just glared at him. Yeah, you don't have the right. But why do you even care? She's not your girl. I know, he said. She's not my girl. But maybe. He yanked on his baseball cap. He yanked on his ball cap and sprinted out the door before he finished his thought. So the sparks start to fly in the very end. Got one more chapter. I'm ridiculously tired. And I just, I'm going to take a short moment, and then we're going to finish this up. Oh boy, this is, this has been something. I'll give it that much. It's been an experience.